Oh, hey. Welcome to this episode of Catching Creation, where we're getting glamorous for Jesus down in South Florida. Alright, what's up? I'm with my friend Channing right now. We are in Macon, Georgia. This is our first stop on our trip this weekend for ministry down in South Florida. But like I said, we're in Macon, Georgia. It's sleeting. We decided, hey, why not stop and go look for frogs when it's sleeting? It's February. It's super cold. Who wouldn't want to look for frogs? We found this amazing animal. <laughs> this male. <Catch. laughs> Serious. <laughs> hey. I don't want to step on it. I got him. I'm going to hold him tight this time. All right, we've got <laughs> this obviously spunky male uh, chorus frog. This is Sudacris uh, ferium. I have a hard time pronouncing that name. But well, they used to be called Sudacris triceriata before they reclassified them. And he's got these three lines on his back. This is an amazing frog. You would think, what kind of animal can breed or even survive if it's cold-blooded in this type of environment when it's so cold outside. Well, this animal was designed with something like a biological antifreeze. So he's able to survive, thrive, and even breed this time of year because he's got this secretion, this uh, glycol or glucose in his, uh, in his skin that he secretes that's like a biological antifreeze. Now, we're gonna let this guy go so that he can continue to breed but it's just a great find and it shows you that even when you think things aren't good, you can go out and find really cool animals if you know where to look. While I was in Macon, Georgia, I got to take my animals to a small Christian school, showed them the hognose snake, got to pass it around like kids see it. Some kids had never touched a snake in their lives before. I showed them corn snakes and the genetic diversity. I showed them my great Suriname cane toad. And my favorite part at the end is I pulled out Rosie the red-tailed boa and they just screamed and screamed, but they loved it. We are in a cafeteria at a school. Now I'm eating pizza, tater tots, and they let me get two milks. This is awesome. <laughs> Check it out, we're driving down the highway. I say, we need a little bit of fuel. And then I look up and there's a sign that says, live baby gators, ice cream, fudge, all the wonderful things that I love. So here we are, we're gonna go check it out. We are in Northern Florida right now. So let's see what this is all about. So we just went in to check out the live baby gators. There were three juvenile alligators in like a 90 gallon aquarium. It was underwhelming to say the least, but it was still cool to see them. The sad part is, is all these guys that we saw, all these headless alligators that people take home for souvenirs that are real living animals at one time, that are their sole purpose is to fund these type of things. So if you see these, don't buy them because you're just promoting and propagating this further. And every time you're buying something like this, you're giving a market to that. And when you do that, you're promoting the death of alligators, which are an amazing animal. So I'll just really recommend from a conservation point, Go take pictures of a real one. It'd be way cooler. What's up? We're in an elevator at a hotel. We got a box full of interesting things. Shh. All right, we have an anole. This is an invasive species of anole, probably from the Bahamas or Cuba. You can see he's got this sail fin looking thing on the back of him, 
but he is a male and I know this because he's got this thing called a dewlap and he he's displays that as a territorial display he'll also sit on the trees and go he'll bob his head and make you know that this is his land his territory he is not happy about us kind of messing with him you see he's not even as pretty as he could be because he's in shed right now his skin's coming off and reptiles will do that every so often they'll shed their skin same way we do except they do it all in one piece whereas our skin sheds about every day it'd be kind of gross if you stepped out of your skin every night this is just an amazing animal and anoles are a very invasive reptile in south florida where we are got a very angry male cane toad. Ah, he just peed all over me. This guy's just sitting on this canal. He's been calling a little bit, trying to lure in some females so that he can pounce on them and breed with them. But this is one of Florida's most notorious invasive uh, amphibians, the cane toad. They've been here since the early 20s and uh, they're not going anywhere. They've established huge populations. They're big, they're strong, they're poisonous. These guys have these paratoid toxin glands which are behind their eyes, which is exactly what the word paratoid means. And they're full of toxin. Uh, when they get agitated, they'll actually start releasing this milky white substance that if something were to bite them and they release that, it could cause cardiac arrest in some animals or it could just be really bad taste. So it's a good mechanism of defense that allows this animal to outcompete every native animal in Florida, which is why it has grown to such a big population down here and the fact that they can eat just about anything that they can put in their mouth makes them a very strong predator. I'm gonna give you a little lesson in peer pressure. You should never succumb to peer pressure because right now my friends, my peers, are telling me I should go try to catch a baby duck. And the mama duck is me. Checked out of the hotel. Now we're heading north from Fort Lauderdale to Jupiter, Florida to go check out John Barry Reptiles and the Barry Zoo. So we're hoping to see some really cool snakes. Bah. All right, check this out. I'm here with my friend John Barry, and we have some amazing boa constrictors that I want to talk about with you. This is a hypo chaos boa that my friend John produced and this is an adult female, a breedable size adult female snake. And as you see my boa Rosie, you know how big she is, but this is actually an adult and they're an amazingly beautiful snake. Now he's got the male right here. And what kind was this one, John? This one is a hypo blood. This is a two year old snake and um, they don't get, uh, they get about twice as big as this, but um, you know, when you see an adult boa that's about the size of a female corn snake, that, that really works for me, you know, I, I love boas, and, um, but they get a little bit too big and that's the cool thing about the Central American boas, um, they're certainly odd dwarfs. Where are they endemic in Central America? Is it all over the country or you know, certain localities? The, um, you have one species of boa at the moment found from Colombia, boa strict imperator, right the way up to northern Mexico, so it's considered one species taxonomically, mm -hmm. however, um, there's certainly locality differences. So if you look at a Sonoran Desert boa, it's very different to a boa that comes from Nicaragua. And this one actually comes from Nicaragua, and that one does as well. Um, as opposed to one that comes from Panama, and the, as they go further north, they get smaller. Right. So they're actually really cool. That is cool. If you can see in the sunlight, I don't know if you can see it, 
she's iridescent. She's got just a whole rainbow of colors on her scales, and she just is a remarkable, um, just beautiful animal. And, and they're really placid as well. You know, with uh, a lot of these snakes, um, you need to handle them and get them used to being handled. And uh, once they, when they, when they're babies, they're a little bit nippy because uh, you know, in the wild, everything that comes along is gonna eat them. <laughs> so uh, they gotta defend themselves. But uh, once they grow, they're really placid, laid-back animals. And um, boas make make great pets. Um, a lot of people like them because they're, they're easy to to care for, and they're more of a display animal than, than a lot of snakes. You know, they're very active when they climb. They're pretty. Um, they're almost semi-boreal, you know, they hang on with that tail, that's typical of boas, they get a good grip with, with the tail and, um, you know, they, they, they hang on with that. And, and they're pretty strong as well, you know, boas are probably um, the most muscular strong snakes of any kind. Yeah, she you feels know, like size. just a they, they solid a muscle. Around. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this episode of Catching Creation. We're leaving Florida in our rearview mirror and heading back home to North Carolina where we hear that it's snowing. So this is an amazing adventure. We had a lot of fun. We got to spread the gospel, do what we love, and bring animals to teach kids with as well as go catch some awesome animals all over South Florida. God is really good. We met amazing people along the journey, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, live your life as an adventure and keep your faith strong. This is Stan Lake signing off. You guys have a great day.